This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. This is the second lecture on budgets, and now let's do an exercise preparing a few budgets. Uh, can you turn to example one, if you would? And have a quick read with me. It says the XYZ company produces three products, X, Y and Z, for the coming accounting period. Budgets are to be prepared using the following information. So without looking at the uh, fine detail yet, it says tells us what the budgeted sales are. Um, we've got below the standard usage of raw material, that each product uses some wood and some varnish, and we can the costs. Uh, we told the inventories of our finished goods, and further down of raw materials, we told the hours per unit, the rate at which labour is paid, but we're asked for a series of little budgets. And so let's go through them one by one. First of all, we're required to do a sales budget. And note, it requires it in quantity, so how many units do we wish to sell, uh, but also the value. Well, I'll do both at once, and this one's easy, because if you look at the top of the question, it says the budgeted sales, we've given it. So there's three products, X, Y, Z. In terms of units, we're budgeting on selling 2,000, 4,000, and 3,000. And whoever's in charge of a sales department, that's their target that they need to sell two, four, and three of each of those products. And we also want to know how much revenue we're budgeting on earning. Product X, we're selling at $100. And so we're budgeting on revenue of $200,000. Uh, Project Y, $4,000 at $130 each. 520,000 and pro uh, product Z, $150 each, 450. And so the budgeted revenue we were hoping to make seven, yeah, whoa, I think that's right, uh, 1.17 million. And so our managers will need that. Again, they'll need uh, a budget, how many we want them to sell. They'll need to know at what selling price we want them to sell. And of course, ultimately, not here, but in general, we would produce a budgeted profit statement and our budgeted revenue, 1.17 million. Let's move on. We did sales first, I said uh, in the last lecture, that's usually our principal budget factor, the thing that's limiting us. But now we know how many we're selling. Let's look at B, which wants a production budget. Because of course our production manager, they'll need a budget, he'll know, she'll need a budget, how many we expect them to produce. Uh, with three products, X, Y, Z, uh, we know how many we're budgeting on selling, 2,000 X's, 4,000 Y's, 3,000 Z's. So if we expect to sell 2,000 X's, why not budget on producing 2,000 X's? Ah, because of inventory. And if you look uh, halfway down the question, it tells us that the inventories of the finished goods, the opening inventory at the start of the year, we've got inventories of five, eight, and seven hundred units. And for some reason, at the end of the year, the closing inventory, we want the inventory to have gone up to six hundred, a thousand, and eight hundred units. So surely, if we want our inventories to increase, we are going to have to produce not only the units we expect to sell, but in addition, a few extra to increase the inventory. And the increase in inventories 
Uh, we want x, we want the inventory to go up from 5 to 600. We want an increase of 100 units. And so they're actually going to have to produce 2,100 units. So we've got 2,000 to sell and the extra 100 to increase our inventories. Similarly, why? We want the inventory to go up by 200 units. We're going to have to produce 4,200 units. And Z, increase of 100, production 3,100. It's in units. The production manager isn't interested uh, at the moment in dollars at all. Production manager needs to know how many units we want to produce next year or next month or whatever it is. And see how one budget leads to another. We couldn't do our production until we'd budgeted our sales. But we now know how many we intend to produce. C. Materials usage budget. Well, now we know how many we're producing, we're able to work out how much materials we're going to need. Uh, because the second table in the question tells us how much usage of raw material there is for each product. Product X, each unit uses five kilos of wood. Each unit uses two litres of varnish. Well, again, now I know what we'll produce, I can work out how much material we're going to use. And so let's do it. I'll do them side by side. The materials are wood. A varnish. Product X. How many are we producing? 2,100. Uh, and how much uh, wood does it use? Each unit uses five kilos. And so we'll need 10,500 kilos of wood. What about varnish? Again, 2,100 units. H unit uses two litres of varnish. So we'll need to use 4,200 in total. Uh, why? Uh, we're producing 4,200 from the previous budget. Um, each Y uses three kilos of wood, which is 12,600 in total. Each Y uses two litres of varnish, 8,400 in total. And finally, Z, uh, we're producing 3,100. Uh, each one uses two kilos of wood, so 6,200 in total. Each one uses one litre of varnish. Now, all right, that was just workings because whoever's in charge of the wood and the varnish, they don't care where it's being used. They need to know how much in total we're using of each. And so our uh, usage budget, uh, wood, 10,500 plus 12,600 plus 6,200, 29,300 kilos. That's the wood we're going to use. And varnish, uh, 12,650. I better check that, sorry. 428431. Hmm. Uh, 15,700 litres. So as I say, this bit simply workings. That's what matters to the person in charge of materials. They need to know how much materials we're going to use. Why did I need that? Because much more important to the materials person is the next one. How much materials do we need to purchase? That's what really matters to the person in charge of materials. And why won't we purchase the amount we need? You know, uh, wood, we need 29,300 kilos. Why do we not buy that many? Ah, again, because of inventories. 
where you're given the inventories of raw materials and this time the inventories are falling. We've got 21,000 kilos of wood at the beginning. We only want to have 18,000 at the end. And so we'll use 3,000 kilos of our inventory. We only need to buy the rest. So let's work out how much we need to buy wood varnish. We know how much we're going to use. We just work that out. 29,300, 15,700. We don't need to buy all of that, though, because in both cases, a bit of it is coming from inventory. There's a fall, a decrease in inventory. Uh, wood. Uh, from inventory, we're taking 3,000 kilos. So 3,000 are coming from inventory. We only need to buy the extra 26,300. And semi varnish, inventory is falling by a thousand litres. So we only actually need to buy that many litres. So again, that's what really matters to the uh, purchases manager. How many do we need to buy of each? And see again how we have to go step by step. We have to budget on sales, then we could budget on production, then we could budget on usage. And once we know the, how many kilos and litres we need, then we could budget on what we need to buy. He says he wants it in quantities we've got and value. They need a budget telling them how much wood to buy and how much they should be spending. And so the wood, how much does wood cost? It's somewhere. Oh, in the second table, wood is $8 a kilo, or should be. So we're budgeting on spending 26,300 times 8, 210,400 on materials. Uh, and on varnish, varnish is $4 a litre. So the budget spend is 58,800. And you see, if you think back to the last lecture about controlling, motivating, authorising, delegating, performance measuring, and so on, uh, <coughs> the person in charge, they need to know how much we need to buy. That's what they should be planning for, make sure we've got suppliers available. In addition, how much they're expected to spend. Because if they end up spending any more than that, I, as person in charge, I'll want them to ex give me a good reason why. You know, and it's, they've not overspent because they went to the wrong supplier and paid too much for something like that. What else? Well, finally, a labour budget. Who is in charge of uh, labour? Needs to know how many hours of labour we're going to need next year and how much we should be spending. Well, how are they going to find out? We've decided how many we're producing. Um, the last bit of the question tells us how many hours each unit should take so we can work out how many hours of labour we need. So X, Y, Z. How many are we actually producing? Two one four two and three one. How many hours does each unit need? X needs four hours a unit, so a total of eight thousand four hundred. Uh, y needs six hours a unit, so twenty five two hundred. Z needs eight hours a unit, 24,800. So how many hours of labour do we need? A total of nine, 34. I'd better again check with my calculator. 8,400 plus 25,200. Yeah, 58,400 hours. Ah, uh, but... The person in charge of labour will need two things. 
They'll need to know how many hours we need to make sure we've enough workers employed. In addition, they'll need their target for how much we should be spending. And it says labour's paid at $3 an hour. And so their expenditure budget £175,200. So I hope uh, that's clear, I hope that's not too much of a problem, but do see, as I've said several times now, two things. One is the budget is not simply a forecast of next year's profit. You know, although it's not asked for here, once we've done all our budgets, we could put them together and produce a profit statement. We know the budgeted revenue, we know the budgeted materials cost, labour cost. We could put them all together. But the budget's a lot more than that. Each individual manager needs their own plan. Sales department needs to know how many they should be selling. They need to know what price they should be charging. Production department, the manager needs to know how many units to produce. The materials people need to know how many materials we're going to use, how many we're going to buy, how much we should be paying. And the labour people, how many hours we need available and how much we should be paying. So a whole series of budgets, one leads to another. And all of these little budgets are called functional budgets. A little budget for each department, a whole series of plans and the functional budgets. Um, and although that was the end of it for this example, once we've prepared all these individual budgets, we will put them all together and produce what we call a master budget. And although there are no sort of precise rules here, it's up to each individual uh, company, but the master budget at the very end normally will have a budget profit statement. Uh, not always, but usually a budgeted statement of financial position or balance sheet not always but usually a capital expenditure budget And what we mean there by capital expenditure, capital expenditure is expenditure on new non-current assets, machines, etc. Uh, because I think fairly obviously buying new machines, new buildings, are uh, likely to be very substantial costs. And so it's quite uh, common uh, for them to do a plan month by month. Oh, in February we'll spend 50,000 on a new machine. Uh, in July we'll spend 200,000 on a new building. In September we'll spend 80,000 on new cars or trucks or whatever. And finally, again it's not a rule but it's very common, uh, what we call a cash budget. And where companies, as you'll see in a later lecture, because I will go through an example, um, very commonly do a budget month by month uh, of what's happening to their cash balance. You know, how much cash are we receiving? How much are we paying? What will happen to our bank balance? So that if we do forecast, we're going to run out of cash. Well, we can plan ahead something to do with it. But I will go through an example on cash budgets in a later lecture. Anyway, I'll pause this one here, but several more lectures to come on this chapter. I said at the beginning, there is quite a lot to go through.